So I decided to start doing this Ask Me Anything series kind of randomly because my other YouTube channel, Hair Loss Hope, I was documenting my recent hair transplant. So currently my hair, uh, yeah, this is like, it doesn't look good, like really. I mean, it's not horrible, but uh, it's gonna look a lot better. So about three months from now, my new hair will start growing in and I'm gonna have like incredible hair. I'm super excited about that. So anyway, I've been documenting that on this Hair Loss Hope channel and doing some live streams, just talking about, you know, the post-operation days. So I wanted to jump on this channel about my music and life in general and uh, do some of these live streams and just chat with you guys. And I thought I would kind of do each one about a different subject and just some of my thoughts on that given subject. So the last one I did was about money. It was ask me anything about money. And so this one is gonna be ask me anything about love, sex, and relationships. And I thought I would share some recent thoughts that I've had about relationships with you and then answer any questions that you might have. So this was my most recent thought on relationships. Was There was a girl I was talking to who was relating her relationship with me to her relationship with other guys. And... I realized that that's a really bad idea. Like it just made me feel very like not unique, I guess would be the word. And the thing is that people are extremely unique. So there, there is no relationship that you have with any other person that is like the relationship you have with another person. Relationships, they're like snowflakes. No two relationships between any two humans on the planet is exactly alike. Because humans, were all so complicated. And so each relationship that we have with another human is even exponentially more complicated than we are individually because now there's two, right? And so I think relating too much your relationship or the potential of your relationship with another person to your relationship with someone else is kind of illogical and also sort of makes, it's sort of like um, making that, that relationship a little bit more like insignificant or sort of like uh, not unique, right? So yeah, I guess that's sort of my thought. So if you're talking to any person <laughs> that um, you have a relationship with, try not to relate your relationship to them to your relationship with someone else. Um, other than just some very nice, you know, basic thing about like, oh, I, you know, I really like this guy and he kind of reminds me of you or something like that. Something that's like very basic, you know, I think that's okay. But, you know, going beyond saying like, oh, we like, for instance, people use star signs, you know, saying like, oh, well, you know, you're an Aquarius. So, I had a relationship with another Aquarius and it didn't work out. So my relationship with you is not going to work out. Like that sort of blanket statement, sort of like negating your ability to have a relationship with another person because of some little fact about some other snowflake that you knew <laughs> is, is I think, yeah, just not giving chance to, uh, to any relationship. Like saying, oh, like maybe you don't like long distance relationships. Maybe that's not really your thing. But to say that a long distance relationship could never work out with any person because it didn't with one person just like doesn't really make sense to me. So that's my first thought on relationships. All relationships are extremely unique. So branching off of that and feel free to ask questions and I'll answer any questions. This is a ask me anything, but I just thought I'd talk until I get some questions. So branching off of that relationship idea. I also don't personally like titles for relationships because titles sort of put your relationship with a person in like a very specific category that now involves expectations, you know, and expectations are, are basically a pillow that will smother any relationship. Any relationship you get in, whether it's romantic or non-romantic, if you put 
a lot of expectations on that relationship, it will be smothered and die. So if I become best friends with you, right? And, or like, that's what I call it. I'm, I'm now like, you're my best friend. And so like, because you're my best friend, this is what you need to do. And when we want to hang out at this time, like you're my best friend. So I need to be your first choice. Like when you start putting all these sort of expectations on a best friend for being your best friend and for having that title of best friend, you're going to kill the relationship, <laughs> you know? And so I think, that can be true for friendships and titles. And so like, I have like, you know, what I could title best friends, but I have actually a lot of like best friends and all those relationships with each one of those best friends is very individual, right? So, uh, yeah. And I think for myself with romantic relationships, every time I like put any romantic relationship I've had in too much of a category, it has been smothered and died and just it's like hasn't worked out as well as just going man like i love you i love spending time around with you and i want to spend as much time with you as i possibly can and i want to do as many fun things as i possibly can with you like that to me has just worked out better and led to better relationships than okay now you're my girlfriend and now when I call, you need to call me back within this certain amount of time. And when I'm traveling, we need to talk a certain amount of time. And we need to make these plans to do these sort of things together. And uh, I should introduce you to these people. And, you know, like, it's just like these expectations, I find. For me, it just sort of, suddenly I feel like I'm in jail instead of in this very exciting relationship. So, cool. I'll see if any of you guys have questions. It's just a couple of my thoughts on relationships. And um, I've got this one other sort of thought that I had to come up recently that I'll, I'll get into if I don't get any more questions before long. So I saw Tina was here. My friend Tina. I love Tina. What's up, Tina? She said, looking good. Thank you so much, Tina. Um, Tina has been my friend, gosh, for how long? Like 10 years, Tina, I think. Maybe we met. And she's been an incredible fan as well, fan, friend, just, uh, again, I'm now I'm putting titles on Tina and I's relationship, but she's just an awesome person. She's an incredible singer and I love her. She's amazing. I'm so happy she exists. So, uh, Pinoy in America, the one and only Pinoy in America. I'm kidding. There are lots of, lots of us, lots of them, lots of you. It says, hi, sexy. Hello. Um, I wouldn't say, I don't know if you're sexy or not, but let's just assume you are. So hello, sexy back to you. Okay. So next thought on relationships. So the other day, this girl asked me if I've ever remained friends with someone that I slept with. And I thought this was a really interesting question, like a long-term friends with someone that I slept with. And I was thinking like, I'm actually not friends. When I say friends, I'm just meaning like, we don't communicate. Like no one that I've ever dated, no girlfriend that I've ever had, um, like that title for or whatever, and for a period of time. Um, yeah, we, none of, I don't talk to any of them, not a single one of those people anymore. And I don't dislike any of them. Actually, they're all nice, sweet, cool people, but I don't talk to any of them anymore. Um, and that's kind of sad. It's really weird that like, it's always, I think that's one of the things about titles of relationships that kind of bugs me a little bit. It's like, when you have this title of that relationship with a person, then it sort of becomes this thing that you're supposed to be like the two closest people in the world and know the most about each other and understand each other the most and love each other the most and all those things. And then when that title doesn't exist anymore between the two of you, then there's nothing. Maybe you hate each other. Maybe you just don't talk to each other anymore. Like there's literally nothing. Like your future families don't become friends so I don't know. That's always like this thing about romantic relationships that's always bugged me personally. It's like there's this huge investment of emotions and, um, and commitment and all of these things. 
and unless that just becomes this person that you live happily ever after with and you know die on a bed next to you or whatever at some point it's going to end and probably you're never going to really speak again <laughs> and never even like tell anyone about really like it's like just that just becomes like this completely dead part of your life you know I just, I don't know. I've always found that like very weird. How do you guys feel about that? That's how I feel about it. So, um, yeah. So back to that question. So this girl was like, hey, like, is there anyone that you still, that you've slept with ever and that you're still friends with? And so actually I realized that that's, there's two people, two people that I've had like, you know, that's, that's happened between the two of us. And that I actually still talk to on a regular basis. And we never, like, we never, like, were girlfriend, boyfriend, anything like that, me and these two girls. But I still talk to them, like, pretty regularly, at least a few times per year, we still talk. And I was wondering, like, why is that? So I didn't, like, you know, date them or whatever. Like, we went out a few times, you know. Um, but we still talk, like, quite regularly. And we slept together. So, like, we didn't start hating each other or, you know, exclude each other from each other's lives or whatever or any of that stuff. And so I realized that the one thing that was kind of different about those two girls that is different as well than any girl that I've had, like, a real, like, long-term romantic relationship with was those two girls both do something in their lives that I do in my life, like very regularly. So both of them are in entertainment in different kinds of ways, but I'm in entertainment too. Um, and so one is a singer. And so we're always talking about like music together, like singing. Like we just happened to sleep together once or twice uh, back a long time ago. I'll get into that in just a second. Good question. <laughs> it's not related to our topic, uh, journey and destination, um, about why I cut my hair. So actually, if you watch the beginning of this video, I do talk about that. But yeah, so one is a singer, so we're, we're always talking about music. So like we still have this thing, this like thread that keeps us together in a relationship, right? That keeps our us talking, and that's music and our common love for music. It's like Tina, you know, who was just chatting here. Her and I, we have this same really common love for music and a lot of music. And so, like, I, a lot of our friendship, I think, is based on music, you know? And so me and this girl that I happen to sleep with, like, we both have the, a very similar way of looking at music, of doing music, of creating music, performing music, all these things. And so, like, that's kept us in a relationship. And the other girl, she's an entertainment too, but not a singer. But we have, like, a very, we have very similar lifestyle things she's really into fitness really into sort of like philosophy dance like we just think the same like our our brain our brains are very very similar and so we we talk like i just want to talk to her because i like the way that she thinks you know so uh yeah, and I thought it's it's really interesting. All those girls that I was in those long-term relationships with, romantic relationships, none of those girls, like when we were together in that, you know, that romantic relationship, we tried to have all these different things in common, you know? And there were things that we did, like we, we sort of did have things in common, certain kinds of music that we like, foods that we like, places we wanted to go, stuff like that. But it all was honestly, like after you get out of the relationship, and you're looking back on it, you realize that like, even though you had those different things in common, you sort of like created, created the commonality between you, but it didn't really exist without you trying to sort of create it. Um, and anyway, I thought, I thought that was really interesting is that I think when people get in romantic relationships with titles, they sort of try and create commonality between them. If that's a word, I think it is. Um, common things that keep them together. And once they have kids together, then there's kids. So like kids is that common thread that even if they don't like doing the same things, watching the same TV shows, eating the same food, whatever it is, kids become like the common thread that holds them together. 
because they're both they both love and care about the kids, you know? And so like, that's the thing that sort of like keeps these relationships, I think most of them together, even though they don't really have that much that they'd really just like sit around and do together on a regular basis otherwise. So that's that. Something I hadn't really thought of that much until that point. Um, so Journey and Destination said, why did you cut your hair? Yeah, so I just had a hair transplant about, 16 days ago, about 16 days ago. So, um, yeah, none of this is, this is all my old transplanted hair. As you guys might know, I've had now four hair transplants. So this is all the hair. I was almost, I would, would be just completely bald here. I'd have no hair on the top of my head, basically, like my dad, which is just totally bald. Um, but this is all hair from like three hair transplants. So this new hair transplant is going to, um, it's gonna really like thicken all of this up and it's gonna be like really thick and amazing. So I'm really excited about that. But all of the transplanted hair right after the transplant, it all falls out in the, the few weeks following the hair transplant. So it's all fallen out now, but it will start regrowing in about three months. So my head is like, uh, you know, this grassy land and seed has been planted. So three months from now, I start getting my new hair and uh, yeah, I'm loving my hairline though, but it's still, it's just a little thin. So I'm just like thickening it all up with this new hair transplant. And uh, yeah, for a lot of hair transplants, they kind of prefer that you shave your head in order to best put the hair, the grafts and everything like that. So that's why. Tina says, I look much longer, younger now than I did 10 years ago. Thank you so much. Uh, Journey and Destination says, I had 3000 grafts. How many did you get? I got uh, 2,500 grafts on this past surgery. Oh, you got your hair surgery three weeks ago. Cool. Yeah, I got mine like two and a half weeks ago. So yeah, it's been really fun documenting that. Make sure that you subscribe to my Hair Loss Hope channel if you haven't um, if you haven't subscribed to that already. Cool. Any other, uh, any questions? I haven't really gotten any questions about relationships, love, sex, all that kind of stuff. And um, yeah, but happy to answer any that you might have. And, uh, and if not, I'm probably gonna head out here and start working on some music. I've got lots of music projects in the works. I haven't released much music in the last couple of years, but boy, I'm working on a lot of music. So should be out here. Um, at least the next song's coming out. The next song is a song that I wrote in my friend Sam Mangobat. He's recorded and it's basically done. It should be out here in the next few weeks. I would say three to four weeks. It's gonna be his next single. It's called What what do I do with a broken heart? And uh, I'm super, super excited. Everyone that's heard it has, yeah, kind of like flipped out. They love it. Like everybody loves it. So Sam, Sam loves it. I played it for Sam over the phone the day after I wrote um, the song, What do I Do with a Broken Heart? And he's like, yeah, I really want to record that. And then we produced it together and, uh, and he recorded it. So that's going to be his next single. What do I do with a broken heart? Um... This is interesting. Okay. Anony Muse says, I think my boyfriend is gay. How do I confirm that? Oh, how should I confront him? Sorry, I thought you said confirm that. How should I confront him? Hmm. Well, I guess that depends on whether, you'd have to give me a little more information. Do you care that he's gay? I mean, if he's your boyfriend, then he, that I would say, if he's your boyfriend, then he's probably not 100% like gay. He probably likes girls a little bit, you know? So, yeah, I don't, you know, I think there are some people that are like 100%, they only like the opposite sex. Like 100%, like just zero interest in, in, the, in like the opposite sex. They're just gay, right? Oh, these are good questions, actually. <laughs> so I'm excited to answer these. Um, yeah, but chances are, I think that by the fact that he's dating you is that uh, he's probably not 100% gay. He's probably, maybe he's like part gay, you know? And so it doesn't really matter, does it, if he's gay or not? I think what matters is, is whether he loves being with you. To me, that's the thing that matters, not whether he's gay. If he loves being with you, then um, be with you. If he is looking for something outside of you, it could be 
a girl, a boy, whatever, then I think that's the thing that you should talk to him about is you should, you should say, um, uh, cool. Sorry. I was reading some of the questions is that, yeah, you should talk to your boyfriend and you should, um, ask him if there's anything else that he's looking for outside of you and just, and be willing. Here's the thing is like, be will you have to be willing to let somebody be honest if he doesn't think that you're willing to actually let him be honest and not judge him for that well then he's not going to be honest with you so then you know what's the point in even asking right you have to be willing to like to let him sort of be himself and explore what he wants to and maybe that's guys you know um and if so maybe you let him go explore that and then if he doesn't like it maybe he'll come back to you. <laughs> so uh, I think the main thing is like, you've got to be willing in any relationship to let the person like be themselves. And um, yeah, and then the first thing is just whether he likes to be with, whether he wants to be with you or not, not whether he wants to be with a guy or not, you know? So yeah. All right, so next question is a uh, favorite dream girl. Okay, I currently have a crush on Phoebe Bridgers. She's I don't generally like, I'm not generally into like blonde, all American kind of looking girls. That's generally not my thing uh, as much, but I really like Phoebe Bridgers. She's, she's an incredible singer. She's got this song called Motion Sickness that has been like one of my most listened to songs of the last two years. And yeah, she's just got the best voice. I love listening to her speak. She has such a beautiful speaking voice. It's so cute and sexy. Um, she's kind of been my crush, like my celebrity crush for a while. And she's just very, I like her sense of humor. So that's kind of my celebrity crush. I think like my favorite celebrity, like Filipina girl is Julianne San Jose. I think her, she's gorgeous. Yeah. Um, Journey to Destination says, you have an amazing voice. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Um, and then Drown Reb Vlog says, what makes you blush? That's a good question. Because I don't blush easily. I think, I think the thing that would most make me blush would just be receiving like a really great compliment from somebody that I think is really attractive. Like something that I, I don't feel like I almost deserve, you know, like getting a compliment that I can tell is sincere from a person that I'm attracted to, but that I don't feel like I really quite deserve. I feel like that's something that would make me blush. Um, yeah, I, I have received a couple of compliments like that that I was like, wow, like, I know that's a sincere compliment, but it's, uh, it's almost like too much. Like I have almost have a hard time believing it myself. Um, I've, I've received a couple of those like in the last few months and, uh, yeah, it kind of makes me blush. Um, Tina says, uh, is she Chinita too? <laughs> no, she's not. No, Phoebe Bridgers is like a blonde hair, probably blue eyed. I don't know. She's like a blonde, like all American kind of looking girl. But yeah, just definitely have a crush on her. I think mostly for her personality and music. Um, oh, awesome. You're most welcome, Miss Muse. Let me know how it goes. Leave a comment on a video somewhere or message me on Instagram or something. And let me know how it goes when you talk to your boyfriend about the fact you think he's gay. And uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm excited to hear how that, that sounds interesting. Okay, Victor says, thanks a million, by the way, of you sending me your version in karaoke of Hong Kong. I owe you a red horse. I'm now learning the right beat, your beat. Oh, thanks, man. Yeah, I, I uploaded that karaoke version of Hong Kong for Victor, really, because he wrote me. Um, I don't drink beer, Victor, so you're going to have to buy me something else. But uh, yeah, <laughs> I will accept something else that I do partake in but I, I don't drink beer. I just can't stand the taste of beer. Yeah, Tina, make sure you check out Phoebe Bridgers. Um, that song, Motion Sickness, incredible song. Um, okay, 
Phaedra said, hey David, since you opened the subject, my take from watching your videos, your body language, is that you like Filipino girls. Am I right? It seems you're enjoying the company of Shane. Yeah, so Shane is, is definitely just a friend of mine. I've never dated Shane, had any kind of remotely romantic relationship with Shane, but I love Shane. Like, I sincerely love her as a person. And I think she loves me as well. So, and I think, I think both of us, like, think the other person is like an attractive person, uh, whether that's like physically or like emotionally or whatever, like we have a great connection, Shane and I. And I really like, I kind of think of her as like a, like a sister, I guess. And so I know in our videos, it often looks like we're sort of like in love with each other, but we are in love with each other, but not, not in like the, I'm going to date you kind of way. Like we just really love each other and like can stare into each other's eyes and just get lost sort of because there's a lot of love. It's kind of like my my daughter. Like I can stare into my daughter's eyes and just completely infatuated with her. You know, she's just so beautiful and charming. And uh, it's kind of, I guess, in a similar kind of way, kind of the same thing with Shane. And yeah, Filipino girls. I mean, I do like so many beautiful Filipino girls. So um, yeah, uh, yeah, there's a lot of pretty ones for sure. Uh, how about the Pretty Russian Girl, the original Hong Kong? Yeah, uh, Anna Rabson, um, the girl, the Pretty Russian Girl that I sing with, is definitely not my type, um, like, physically. She's an, an incredible person. I love her, but she's not, like, she's just not my type, you know? And I'm not her type at all. Like, look at her husband. Looks nothing like me. <laughs> so we're not each other's type, like, physically, but... Again, I really love her as a person. She's incredible. And uh, I think she, she loves me as a person too. So we're able to connect in like a really good way, I think. And hopefully in our videos too. Yeah, I definitely, uh, Tina said, did you have a crush on Yasi Pressman before? I think I definitely did have a crush on Yasi for sure. Yeah, Yasi's super, super cute. And I had, I had a pretty big crush on her. So, but I haven't talked to her or seen her in, in a long time now. <laughs> yeah, buy me, Tina said, Victor can buy me a Java chip from Starbucks. Yeah, Tina knows that that's my, my jam. So, Victor, you can buy me a Java chip from Starbucks when you see me. I will definitely drink that with you. Well, cool, guys. Well, it's been about 30 minutes, and uh, yeah, these are just some thoughts. I wanted to jump on and say hi, and I thought this live thing is kind of fun. I really enjoy it, and it's great, great uh, hearing from especially people like uh, you, Tina and Victor, um, you know, people that I know here, even off of YouTube and all this. And um, <laughs> Johnny says, Hi, David, my dad, and I love your music, brother. Keep up the good work. Thank you so much, Johnny. All right, so I'm going to sign off. Um, leave a comment and let me know if there's any other live videos, like any other certain topics you'd like me to talk about. You know, maybe favorite music or um, music theory or... Uh, anything, family, like whatever, um, leave a comment and let me know what you'd like me to talk about. And I'll do another, ask me anything and we'll talk soon. All right.